theme Victoria Horror West Punk is what this game was described as by one of its creators. This is the awkward GM Corbin, and today we will be discussing Through the Breach. Today's sponsor is Warlock Sanctum Games. They are professional game masters, and if you'd like to hire them, you can find their link in the description below. If you're watching this before August 21st, be sure to check out their Mage the Awakening and Changeling the Lost games. Don't be afraid to message them after the date to see if they have any open slots available. Through the Breach is a tabletop role-playing game that follows the weird west trope of cowboys with magic and steampunk technology. Here you will find cowboys with coffins strapped to their backs, giant bloodthirsty animated teddy bears, cyborg union workers, magic wielding dancers, ninjas with sniper rifles, and just so much more. Through the Breach is based on the tabletop skirmish game Malifo. Unlike D&D, this game uses cards to resolve actions, an added benefit being that even if you flip poorly, you can play a card from your hand to change the result. Fate is now in your hands as opposed to the dice gods. Through the Breach has two editions, but all the materials are cross-compatible with one another. I'll have a link in the doobly-doo below to the uh, second edition version. Through the Breach is set in an alternate history early 1900s where magic and steampunk technologies exist. There's a lot to cover, and while I could go into detail about the deep lore such as the Abyssian Empire of Ethiopia and the Necromancers of Spain, I'm on a time limit here. In the 1700s, spellcasters found that magic was dying on Earth and decided to rip a hole in reality to get more. After a ritual was performed and a boatload of people died in the explosion, a portal opened to the world of Malifaux, and for a time, Earth mined soul stones from Malifaux to power their magic and technology. Then the native inhabitants of the world attacked and closed the portal. A hundred years later, the portal reopened and the second soul stone rush occurred. An organization known as the Guild runs Malifaux City and makes a fortune selling soul stones to Earth. The rest of Malifaux is mostly frontier land, and many people would like to lay claim to its secrets. Here are a bunch of characters from the world of Through the Breach and Malifaux. There are a plethora of themes you can cover in this setting, so don't worry if you think your idea won't fit the setting at all. It probably will. What attracted me to the game was the steampunk aesthetic. You have exosuits, giant robots, pneumatic limbs, robot wings, and in the bottom right here is a model I made of a man in a walking organ with gatling guns. That's right, this game has a plethora of miniatures and you'll find links below to where you can find them. To make a character, you perform a tarot card reading. You flip the cards and then consult the results from the rulebook. The center card corresponds to your character's background. Two of the cards determine your physical and mental aspects, which are your attributes, while the remaining two determine the skills you picked up in childhood and as an adult. Once you flip all the cards, it gives you a tarot card reading that can be used to resolve parts of your character's destiny and gain new abilities. Here's an example of a tarot card reading. Once the first has been last, and the last has been first, the melody will be lost within the gutters, and the living shall wither from your grasp. The leaves will whisper your name, and only your brothers will stand at your side. If you resolve part of this fortune, you can choose how to react, and then determine what ability your character gets from it. For example, maybe you get to the edge of a forest, and a mysterious creature whispers your name. Do you go to it, or do you deny it? Both can affect how your character's destiny plays out, and give you a different ability. Maybe going into the wood grants you a wolf-like ability, or perhaps running away gives you a better way of detecting the supernatural. Back to character creation. Once you're done with the tarot cards, you can pick a pursuit and gear. Pursuits are like character classes, except you can switch to a different one at the end of any session. However, you can only get your first pursuit starting equipment at character creation. I've separated the pursuits between those with starting equipment that is only a toolkit and the ones who get better items. For instance, a dabbler is a spellcaster who gets access to a spellbook. Unlike other games, you actually craft your own spells on the fly by mixing a variety of effects. It's very versatile. 
Most other pursuits get weapons, but the drudge can get a robotic limb replaced, and tinkerers get an artificial creature known as a construct, which technically can be a tiny robot or even a small creature made of any material you happen to have lying around. I highly recommend starting out with either Dabbler or Grave Robber as they give you access to grimoires for magic, and acquiring those in game can be difficult if your game master doesn't let you find any during gameplay. During the end of the session, at least one player should encounter part of their destiny that the tarot cards foretold at character creation. When this happens, they either accept their destiny or reject it. And when this happens, they either gain an increase to an aspect or a permanent ability created using the magic rules. At the end of the session, players will go up one level in their pursuit, gain 1 XP, and get the ability to buy skills, increasing their existing skills, or gain a skill trigger that activates when a specific suit is used in your skill flip. There are different trigger effects for each skill and each suit. For instance, the Tome Trigger on the Barter Check allows you to reduce the price of an item or service an additional 20%, while the Tome Trigger on a Pistol allows you to ignore armor on that attack. If you want to go take on a more powerful pursuit, you can try to get an Advanced Pursuit. Think of Advanced Pursuits as Prestige Classes from D&D 3.5. I'm not sure if there is an equivalent in D&D 5e, so I'm sorry about that. If you want to take on an advanced pursuit, such as becoming a death marshal of the guild or a grave servant resurrectionist, you can do this by getting approval from your game master. If you want to take one, it's recommended to have a session where your character tries to accomplish this task as opposed to just hand waving it away and saying that you got this class um, off screen. Heads up, Malifo uses a standard deck of cards, but with a few differences. The symbols are replaced with new ones. Hearts is rams, clubs is tomes, diamonds is masks, and spades is crows. The face cards are replaced with number values, so jack, queen, and king become 11, 12, and 13. And lastly, the deck has a black and red joker that act as the critical miss and critical hit result, respectively. Everyone shares from a communal deck in the center of the table. Whenever you want to attack, or need to figure out if you succeed in action, you flip a card off the top of the deck. You then add your result to the value you have in an aspect plus skill. So shooting a revolver would be grace plus pistol. You then take that total and compare it to the target number of the check determined by the game master, or by the stats on an enemy. Either their defense or willpower stat depending on the action type. Was the result too low? Each player has a small personal deck of cards called a twist deck and a hand that can be used to replace a crappy card flip. This is called cheating or cheating fate. Never again will you have to worry about rolling a one four times in a row. To clarify, your hand is only made up of cards from your twist deck and the twist deck only has 13 cards, one through 13, but the player gets to decide which suits are more beneficial. For example, if you use a lot of crow cards to get effects off, you might want to have it as your defining suit, so you'll be able to draw a 13 or 9 of that suit. When either deck runs out of cards, you reshuffle the decks, and you can draw more cards into your hand during the course of the game by failing actions, at the end of encounters, at the end of the prologue, or when the communal fate deck is reshuffled. If you want to play through the Breach in person, Weird Games makes a plethora of miniatures for you to use with your game. And since this is based off of a war game, the distances and movements are based on tape measurements, so inches. Although you could use a grid or your imagination if you prefer. If you want to make a custom model for your character, I highly recommend the multi-part miniature kits that Weird makes for the game. One box can make up to 10 unique models, I believe. Because Malifaux was the base setting, I'm going to cover that setting as opposed to the Earthside setting. Though with the second edition of Through the Breach and the release of the Other Side War game, Earthside's lore is growing. Malifaux has eight factions, which I've listed here. The main factions are the Guild, which I mentioned before. They make up the law enforcement and corrupt politicians within Malifaux. 
the Arcanists, who are the rogue mages within the city who rebel against the guild, the Neverborn, which are the native inhabitants of Malifaux and come in a variety of magical creature shapes and sizes like vampires, puppets, swamp creatures, and much more. The Resurrectionists are a catch-all term for necromancers, from the Dr. Frankenstein types to the mystical cultist types. The outcasts are your catch-all term for outlaws and mercenaries who act as guns for hire. And if you are into anime, then check out the Ten Thunders. They are an Asian criminal syndicate that has secretly infiltrated every other faction. The Gremlins are your joke faction of green-skinned creatures native to Malifaux. Their culture revolves around alcohol, guns, and pigs. Stereotypically, seem like rednecks, but a few of the sub-factions mimic other aspects of human society, such as gunslingers and magicians. The Explorer's Society is the newest faction and seems to be made up of aristocrats and adventurers who want to uncover the dark secrets of Malifaux. Three of its members include a guy who hunts humans for sport, an intrepid inventor, and a frontier sheriff. So quite diverse group there. These may be the main factions, but there are definitely a lot more that don't get talked about as much, or sub-factions within other groups, such as the Miners and Seamfitters Union that is an offshoot of the Arcanist faction. Through the Breach is officially supported in the Free Vassal program, link in the description below, though the module hasn't been updated since 2016. It has map editing, so that's a plus, as it's hard to find steampunk battle maps online. I've heard people using other virtual tabletop software, such as Tabletop Simulator and The Forge to mix results. I'll post links to those as well. You technically can play it on Roll20 if you feel comfortable editing the decks so that each player has a personalized twist deck. Or you could just have players use their own twist decks on camera. It depends on how much buy-in you have from your players and how willing they are to learn new software. If I were to run through the breach, I'd lean into the Dime Store novel or Penny Dreadful aesthetic hard. The scenarios these players will be facing are larger than life, and as such, they should feel like a folk hero in a tall tale or legend. I don't want to overload my players with the lore, so I might have them meet one faction to start off with. Likely the guild, as they are the most public-facing faction that exists. From there, they might hear rumors of one of the other factions as criminals that the public is afraid of. Whichever faction I present, I'll assume that the players will want to either investigate or join them. From there, we will be introduced to our first antagonist, which will be a rogue element within that group, such as an Arganist who is a building steampunk robots out of people, or a puppeteer who has been replaced with a Neverborn creature. I've got such a big collection of Malfo minis, I'd like to run the game in person if I can. Um, let's look at this. All the minis! <laughs> All the minis! <laughs> I'd make sure to plan out my players' destinies at least a session ahead of time so they can progress along their destiny track. And further on in the story, I hope to introduce the other factions as, as allies and rivals that the players can lean on for information and assistance. It's fun to see a group of players debate what they do with the corpse of a high-level guild official only to sell the person's body to a resurrectionist who is going to turn them into an undead puppet to enact laws in their favor. Please let me know what you think of Through the Breach as a steampunk RPG in the comments below. Does it stack up to other games that are out there? If you like this video, please send a couple bucks my way through PayPal via my Ko-fi account, link in the description below. Like the video to help other people find these videos, subscribe to help other people find my channel, and hit the bell icon to keep my returning viewership numbers up so that other people find the channel. I'm happy to get back to Beyond D&D videos again, and Through the Breach is one of my favorite D&D palette cleansers. I'll be returning to Chronicles of Darkness content in a little bit, but I wanted to help introduce people to other game lines as well, not just Chronicles of Darkness. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one. Let me show you some of the cards here, just so that you get an idea. I've got here the uh, Black Joker. I've got the uh, Red Joker here. And then I've got here uh, Seamus. He's one of the Resurrectionists, who's kind of like Jack the Ripper. 
This is Zoraida. She is sort of she's called the Crone, and she's sort of a fortune teller and a uh, mind controller within the Neverborn faction. Um, this is Lucius, who, even though he is the secretary to the governor general of the guild, he is possibly a Neverborn creature. And then this is the Dreamer up here on his giant nightmare creature called Lord Chompy Bits, who is one of the more powerful entities in the game called a Tyrant. Malifo has a lot of lore and it's just a fun game for me to play. I I played Warhammer 40k for a few for a few years, probably longer than a few years. But Malifo is always the game I like for tournaments because it feels like I have much more at my fingertips as far as uh, controlling randomness. I'm not rolling dice, I'm drawing cards and deciding whether or not I want to use a high card in my hand to get an ability to go off or to save that for something further down the line. It's a lot more strategic and I feel a lot more in control when I play that game. It's It says something where I've never I've never like gotten out of the bottom half of a Warhammer 40k tournament bracket versus a Malifaux tournament where I've gotten fourth place a few times. I almost got third, but then I screwed up that last round. Anyway, um, I'm not paid for by Weird. I'm not a henchman like one of their um, one of the people who goes to stores to advocate for weird miniatures and Malifaux. I just really love the game, and it's probably one of the best games out there that only a handful of people know about. Thank you so much for watching, and have a good one.